Hello guys, good day. This is Anna of Reinforcement Club. Today we are going to talk about the top two delegation strategies, namely the golfer and stewardship. Now the essence of delegation actually came from leadership and management practices. This is to foster productivity, to, to make things efficient and effective, even more effective, and even to increase production by means of delegation. Another purpose of delegation is for innovation, to come up with new ideas, strategies, even new tech, innovation. And uh, another thing, another purpose of delegation is for employee development. It could be not only in, like not only in employee in the workplace, but also at home. You know, have you noticed it that our parents also delegate some household, household chores to us? And we ourselves could even delegate some tasks to our friends, to our colleagues, even to our parents sometimes. So it happens every single time. We may not be aware about this, but we need delegation because we cannot do things alone. If we're aiming high, we have to work as a team, as a family, as a community, as a country. It takes a whole lot of delegation. And delegations could be crucial at times. So there are people cuz cuz there are people who likes to be under micromanagement, some people loves to be left alone with instructions and then you can leave them alone. See what they can do about them. I see what they can do about your instructions and what they can come up with with it. it Could be a new idea. So this is common in innovation. Creative people. Now, each characteristic of uh types of delegation, namely golfer and stewardship, have distinct characteristics and implications. So now I am going to discuss to you this the first one, the gopher delegation. So this type of delegation involves assigning tasks where the delegatee, you know, the person whom you given the task to, is expected to follow specific instructions and guidelines given by the leader. So the gopher comes from the word Go for that. Go for this. In other words, just like what we hear at home, do this, do that. You know, so, to some of our parents, why can't you do this and do that? And then our mom comes back again and why did you do this? Why did you do that? So that's go for. Go for this. Go for that. Indicating highly directive style of delegation. Now, we are also doing this. It could be not obviously because we don't consider ourselves as a leader sometimes, but we are also good friends, good brothers or sisters that we delegate some tasks to our fellows. Because once again, we cannot do things alone in this planet Earth. Now the advantage of this delegation strategy, the go for this, go for that, go for, is control. So in this type of strategy, the delegator, the the leader retains tight control over how the a certain task should be should be uh, executed, ensuring that the work is done precisely according to the leader's standards, not to the employee standards, not to the delegatee's standards. His, you know, he, delegatee standards, which is also related to the leader's standards. We're in. There'll be two ideas now. But with the, this gopher strategy, it has to be the leader's standards or organization's standards. You don't have to come up with your standards. It has to be based on one standards, the leader's standards. Now, another good thing about this, uh, go for this, go for that. Gopher strategy is clarity. You know, it prevents misunderstanding and ensures... Uh, the delegatee knows what exactly is expected. And of course, the best part of this is speed. You know, who would have who would have thought though, when when a leader keeps coming back to you from time to time, you always want to speed things up. Make things faster. Yes, 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 I'll do this, do that, I'll do this and do that. Because you don't want to be bugged as much as possible. So you want to make everything fast. So the task can be completed quickly precisely without needing to make decisions because most of the time the leader is the one making decision. So this is micromanagement. 
where a delegator or a leader is overly involved, even in minor details. And one of the disadvantages of this type of delegation is, you know, if you are an employee, if you are the delegatee, you have lack or no autonomy at all because you're being controlled. You may feel disempowered and demotivated due to lack of decision-making freedom because of micromanagement. Have you noticed that even at home, when our mom or dad keeps coming back to us, following up, you know, you just want to speed things up and then they finish, but you don't, most of the time, you don't learn, learn anything from that other than, you know, trying to consider your parents' feelings, but you don't learn anything out from it. And, you know, with this type of delegation, the gopher, go for this, go for that. It offers a limited opportunities for an employee, a delegatee, to develop their problem-solving and decision-making skills because it's all about the leader's standards. Well, you could learn from the leader, but not all the time because we have our own ways. We have our own originality. We could come up with another idea much related to the leader's idea or it could be better. But with go for delegation, it has to be the leader standards, which is based on the company standards or institution standards, or it could be based on primarily on your mom or dad standards, nothing else. That is the only way to go for this and to go for that, nothing else. You can't come up with your own. Now we have another type of uh, delegation, which is called stewardship delegation. So this type of delegation involves assigning responsibilities along with the authority, sorry, authority to make decisions and determine how tasks should be completed. So the, the focus of this task is on the outcome rather than the process. So most of the time when you encounter a, a stewardship delegation, they are just going to give you what type of result that they want that sometimes you don't know how it must be done but you have to come up with it so this is common in innovation and i even to be honest i even like it this way when i already have an idea about my job description and what must be done the rules the policies just give me what do you want and i'm going to give that to you in any ways i can so the process, the ways, is up to the employee. It's up to me how I come up with that result. Just give me the, just give me what kind of thing that you want, and I'll do my best to come up with that my way. So that is stewardship. the The advantages the advantages of this type of delegation is empowerment. So, as an employee given an instruction by a leader or a company to come up with this type of result, this type of, uh, this, this amount of uh, sales calls and then close the sale, uh, this number of sale every month. Like for example, your quota for sale is, let's just say 15 per day sale. And you're going to call, it, it, it's up to you how many people you are going to call in order to come up with 15 sales per day 15 or more it's up to you that's the result that is instructed so what are you going to do you're going to get empowered because there is no way for you to really come up with those 15 sales there's no one way in sales you have to be flexible even in workplace even at home everywhere so in this type of le leadership you will be empowered it could be you know for no choice but you got to get that result. You got to get it done in any ways you can. So you have the freedom to decide to achieve the desired result, which can be, well, personally for me, it's highly motivating and empowering. And it can also help an employee in terms of skills development because it fosters the growth of critical thinking. You know, you have no choice but to come up with that result, problem solving, and even leadership skills. And in the most part, Innovation, not necessarily that you're going to invent a new technology, but innovation in terms of ideas, ways, strategies. With autonomy to decide on methods, the delegates can bring a new ideas and innovative solutions. So this is the best part of this type of delegation. Now, the disadvantage of this, you know, we have pros and cons in every decisions that we make. 
Now, the disadvantage of this type of uh, delegation is, as a leader, you have to know the risk. There's a higher risk that the task might not be completed as expected if the delegates has lack of experience and understanding about the task or result. And, you know, in this type of delegation, it requires an initial investment of training and trust building to ensure that delegates are prepared for their responsibilities. So just like, for example, uh, as a parent, you know, when your mom wants you to complete this task, like, for example, when you were young, your mom wants you to know how to wash dishes every after lunch and dinner. So you'll be assigned to that. So initially, your mom is going to wa watch you, you know, to teach you initially how to wash dishes in a period, in a certain period of time until you are ready. So that's how it must be done because it, that's just the basic thing in the household chores, washing dishes initially if it's your first time and you were just a kid until you have the confidence to really wash the dishes your, yourself to the point that whether you like it or not, that is your job assignment at home. So the same is true in, in the workplace. So the, the employee has to undergo a certain training to be able for them to prepare for their responsibilities and know the risk in the most part. And when you do this type of delegation, the stewardship, wherein you let your employees, you let your, your people do the thing, you just want this, this type of result, you also have to monitor them, but hands off. You just got to know that what they're doing is right is within the policy, the rules, within their scope of limitation, or even beyond that, you can even talk about it. That's why that's the essence of monitoring. The delegator must establish a clear accountability and performance metrics. So you have to know, you know, the, your employee, as a leader, you have to let your employee know the right data to measure to ensure outcomes are met, which can be complex at times. You have to negotiate talk about at times in order to come up with this best idea best innovation now which type of delegation is better it actually you know the, the choice between golfer and stewardship delegation def depends on several factors it could be you know a nature of the task you can't afford to take the risk the competence it, it also depends on the competence and the confidence of the delegatee the person you assign the task to. And it also depends on the organization or the company culture, whether the company just want to implement their own idea so you're not allowed to come up with anything else. You just follow the rules. What to do? Do this, do that. And if you're happy with it, you can stick around as, much as, as long as you can. Now, the golfer delegation is better suited for routine tasks. Highly specific task where precision is critical that the leader or the company cannot afford to take the risk of you making mistakes. The delegate may not yet have the, you know, this is important also if the, the delegate or the person you assign the task to is not, uh, high, is not highly skilled yet to operate independently. So if you are encountering a, a newbie in the workplace, so that newbie, new employee has to be supervised for a, in a certain period of time until he or she can be confident and uh, can be trusted working independently. Now, in terms of stewardship delegation, this type of delegation is better for complex tasks, especially in creativity, that you don't want any noise, any at the back of your head because this is creativity problem solving, innovation, you have to come up with your very own inner idea coming from the universe, from whichever part of the brain, you have to come up with the idea. So that's why you don't, as much as possible, you try to limit the noise around anything that bugs you. It is most effective in developing future leaders. You have to give them autonomy to implement, to act out their ideas, promoting a culture of trust and empowerment uh, to the leaders as well as to the followers, to the employees that they're that under them, who are under them. 
Now, in terms of uh, which one is better, uh, golfer or stewardship delegation, um, neither type of delegation is universally better. It depends on the situation. But yes, indeed, it depends on the situation and it depends on your goal. If you want to develop people's skills, give them empowerment, uh, give them an opportunity to really come up with a, a better solution, you can use stewardship. But if you want to get things done as quick as you can without them learning from it, yeah, you can go for Go for. Go for this. Do this. Do that. The go for delegation. A balanced approach often works best. So it depends on your aim, your vision, mission, goal of the company or as a person. So a balanced approach often works best where simpler tasks might be delegated. Simpler tasks. Simpler tasks might be delegated with a go for style and more complex or strategic tasks with a stewardship approach. So it depends on your aim. In other words, it, it's important for you to know what you want. You know, you have to get the bigger picture of your goal, of your target. Then you can delegate those certain tasks, which you consider best for delegation with efficiency and effectiveness in the end. Now, if you like this episode today, you can share it to your family and friends. You can follow me in YouTube, Facebook, YouTube podcast too, Amazon podcast, Spotify, Apple podcast, and a reinforcement club, a reinforcement club. So yeah, I do appreciate your time. Have a lovely day ahead. Thank you once again.